Let's go over the difference between the Senate and the House of Representatives. Congress has two chambers, the upper and lower. The Senate is considered the upper chamber, and the House is considered the lower chamber. Senators represent their state as a whole, whereas representatives represent the people of the state. It is because of this that senators have six-year term limits and representatives have two-year term limits, since representatives respond to the needs of the people. The Connecticut Compromise of 1787 laid the groundwork for congressional representation. Each state is allowed two senators. This is to maintain equal representation for every state, regardless of its size. Each state is guaranteed at least one representative, making the minimum number of state electors at three. Since the number of representatives is based on population, states with larger populace will have more representatives than smaller states. For example, California has 53 representatives, whereas Wisconsin has eight. The total number of representatives and senators in a state equals the number of electoral votes that state has for the presidential election. So California has 53 representatives plus two senators for a total of 55 electoral votes. Although both houses are similar with respect to their duties, they do have their own privileges. The Senate has advice and consent powers, which includes duties like approving treaties, approval of cabinet and judicial nominations, and the ability to remove the president and elected officials in the case of impeachment. The House's role relies mainly on revenue-based legislation. The House also votes on whether articles of impeachment can be warranted against an elected official. If impeachment is supported by the majority vote, the charges then get transferred to the Senate who does the formal investigation related to the impeachment. Both houses are similar in that both houses must approve a bill before it gets sent to the president to become law. Both houses also need a two-third majority vote to override a veto of a bill by the president. They can also approve the declaration of war. Both houses must approve the declaration of war. The two houses of Congress, as well as the president, serve to provide reasonable checks and balances, meaning the president nor each house should have ultimate power of a country. The founding fathers knew the balance of power was essential for the government to behave accordingly and to limit the ability to become tyrannical. I hope this helped you understand the houses of Congress.